Um, so welcome everybody to the UKC training um, this uh, in January and February 2024. It's great to have you here. Um, I'm looking forward to working with you over the week. Um, so this is an online, the way this is done, this is delivered online. Um, it's important for you to work through the tutorials in your own time outside of these scheduled Zoom sessions. You'll have seen they're kind of more in the middle of the day. That's to kind of account for anybody that might have any caring responsibilities, anything like that. Um, I don't want to have too long Zoom sessions because Zoom fatigue is a real thing. Um, and there's a mix of tech support through the Slack workspace, which I think you've you've all joined. Um, if you haven't, then please do sign up from the from the link. Um, and through the interactive Zoom sessions that we'll have uh, during the day. Um, do feel free to ask like, any questions at any time and um, try and, you know, uh, be interactive as much as possible. It will really help the uh, the experience uh, with, the, with the training. So we've got Zoom sessions each day. We'll have presentations uh, 10 to 11. Um, so this, this time slot here, uh, we'll have a session before 12 for kind of debugging and technical support of the tutorials that you're on. Similarly, again, after lunch, 1 till 2.30, and then for the whole day, there'll be uh, support on the Slack workspace. So I'll record all the Zoom presentations um, except the Tuesday one, which is the kind of icebreaker for all of you to introduce yourselves to each other and talk a bit about your work. Um, and so turn off your camera, meet yourself if you don't want to be seen uh, during those recordings. Um, for Tuesday, please prepare a kind of five to 10 minute talk. And so, if you could send me the slides by the end of the day, that'd be really helpful because I, I, ideally you'll be able to share your screens, but if that something breaks, it's useful to have the, have the backup. Um, so what's the, the kind of the premise of these tutorials? Why, why are we here? Why, why, are, they, why are they set up as the way they are? Um, and the, the kind of the premise, the problem is, you know, you've decided or you've been told to use the UKCA model, but, you know, you might be the only person at your institution using it. It can be difficult to get up and running. It can be difficult to overcome and solve the various problems that you might have using the model. Um, so the UKC tutorials that you're going to be working through this week, um, they're the ones to kind of help. They're the ones that have been designed to help you solve this first problem, you know, how how do you learn how to use it? How do you get up and running with it? The second issue to kind of overcome ongoing problems, you know, that's not something you can do in isolation. Um, that's addressed primarily uh, by the NCAS Computational Modeling Services team, which is based in Reading. So their website is there, cms.ncas.ac.uk. Um, and they've got a load of information on running the UM and UKCA and on Archer 2 and various other computer systems and models and what they also have is a help desk uh, which is linked to from their web page and this is a really helpful resource um, if you have a problem you can ask a question um, and it gets sent to people who will be able to well who should be able to answer it or at least you know work through the problem with you um, it's also searchable so lots of people have had you know may have had the same problem if you've had there may not be a need to ask a question, to open a ticket, to do anything like that. You can have a look, see what the solution was, and it's probably going to be something, you know, if it's the same sort of problem, it might be the same solution as well. And if it doesn't work, you can then link to those previous tickets and say, you know, I tried this, it didn't work, I'm getting this other problem, and, and that kind of helps everybody by working through these these questions. So this is a problem I had, um, trying to get some jobs running on Archer 2, and I think Roz was really helpful in in pointing out that actually I'd I just missed something when I when I set the suite up. So, you know, it's it's a really good thing to have this kind of help desk there and the fact that it persists. It's all you can view it publicly, but you should all, I think if you have a Puma account, have have a um an account to raise tickets on it or, or be able to set it up. Um so the first question, uh the first the first thing to talk about is what what exactly is UKCA? You know, some people may be more familiar, some people might not. What exactly is uh, UKCA, what's it for? Um, so taking a little bit of a step back, UKCA is, an, it is part of an atmospheric model. Um, it's part of the, the Met Office atmospheric model. And what these models um, aim to do is, is solve, you know, and integrate the knowledge of our atmosphere uh, forward in time. So we can, we can work out um, and understand hazardous weather systems, uh, climate patterns, all this sort of stuff. They have various different aspects that are um, modeled within this kind of 
overarching model. They're going to need to have an understanding of radiation, um, of clouds, of convection, um, the hydrological cycle, um, vegetation, which is important, um, and the surface processes. And they're going to need to solve various um, physics equations to be able to kind of give us a reasonable representation of the atmosphere. Um, and UKCA is, which I'll talk about in a second, is built is built within this kind of modeling framework. Um, and the unified model is um, interesting in its philosophy, which is that it wants to have a way of representing all these different scales. So you might be thinking of, you know, traditionally UKCA thinks about climate um, scales, so 120 kilometer resolution or or lower, uh, and you might be running for tens to hundreds of years. But the Met Office will use exactly the same model when they're running their operational forecast that you might see um, on the TV or, or on websites um, or their seasonal predictions. Um, you know, if, they, if they're thinking about what ENSO is going to be like or rainfall in the in the next few months, something like that, that, you know, it's the same model and they might be running it in research mode. So this says one, you know, sub sub one kilometer down to really, really high resolution. And it's all run in the same model. So the same code runs in all these different things. The code itself is over 25 years old, um, and it's been worked on by thousands of people over the years. The, the amount of, of, of man hours and people hours that's gone into it is, is very, very large, and it's very robust in, in what it does. Um, and But there are some issues with it. So um, you've got these schemes that you, you kind of code up in the, in the model, um, you know, UKCA is one of these schemes that, that, that deals with chemistry and aerosols, and it's got to work at a range of scales from 300 kilometers for kind of climate climate resolution that was run in kind of CMIP, uh, earlier versions of CMIP down to um, kind of forecast type resolution. Um, so global forecast or down to say really high resolution for research work. And it's the same scheme has to work across all these different scales. And it's in some respects it's even more complicated than that because it's not just the earth that the um is used to simulate it's also used more and more at the moment for exoplanet research so um you can not only simulate the earth using the unified model you can simulate um earth-like planets with the unified model and you can even simulate hot jupiter-like planets using this unified model and in fact this is really interesting. I mean, just because it's interesting research anyway, but it's also interesting from the model perspective because it gives you faith that the model is doing the right thing. You know, if you could simulate a hot Jupiter and you can simulate a, an Earth-like planet, you can simulate Earth itself, you know, this gives you faith that the, the underlying physics of the model is doing the right thing. Because not only do we have observations of Earth, but we're starting more and more to get observations of exoplanets that we could then use to verify, you know, is our model kind of broadly doing the right thing? Obviously, they're not as... Um, comprehensive as the uh, the results you see uh, and the the observations you see for the Earth, but you can still get quite a lot of information from uh, from some of these things. So, you know, this is really interesting, and um, UKCA is kind of a a part of this. Um, and what UKCA was originally thought about was for um, putting in atmospheric chemistry and aerosols into um, climate models. So this is a kind of schematic over time showing how climate models have developed in terms of their complexity. Um, aerosols went in a little bit earlier and then atmospheric chemistry, uh, which is the um, also what, what UKCA covers, which is the C in UKCA, um, also also went in um, for a lot of the climate models relatively, relatively recently. Um, and the point of these is, is these climate models that you increase the number and complexity of processes that are represented within them. And so UKSA itself has a lot of complex uh, processes that are, are simulated throughout the um, the code. And you'll learn about these and, and how to, to change some of these as, as we go through the tutorials this week. Um, so what is UKCA? UKCA, uh, the United Kingdom Chemistry and Aerosols model, needs to be thought about not as a particular collection of chemistry and aerosol schemes. It was actually designed to be a framework for putting these schemes into the unified model. So while during this week, um, you'll be running with kind of one aerosol um, configuration and um, well, actually you'll, you'll run with several different chemistry schemes, but the primarily when you're say running a, a global model, you might only run one particular scheme. And so 
but it's important to, to remember that actually it's a framework for putting these in and what you'll be learning about in these tutorials is how to use that framework to add new chemistry add new reactions within to to kind of make to, to study um, different processes within um, the model um, and why is it important to have interactive chemistry and aerosols within within a, a model like this well um, we know that some models can be quite sensitive to say, say how certain things are represented so this is a an example from from atmospheric chemistry sp specifically ozone um, and a lot of models might rather than having you know complex uh, chemistry in a model might represent the ozone in the model bioclimatology that's fed in from data or uh, another model that's um, produced a, a field that the model that the this other model then uses um and that's you know that that could be perfectly fine um but what um what we saw particularly in the unified model is that it can be quite sensitive to how the ozone is represented so um if you run a this is what a standard climate change experiment called the four, abrupt four time co2 experiment and what happens is you have a pre-industrial simulation and you um at one point you instantaneously quadruple the amount of co2 and you look how the model responds and this gives you an idea of the climate sensitivity of the model and what we found was we got quite a big difference between the answer if you ran with interactive chemistry and, and with not interactive chemistry instead running with the climatology from this pre-industrial control simulation um, but if you ran if you made a new climatology from your interactive ozone you were able to then replicate the answers that you saw so um and it should be important to note this is you know this is model specific so some models will see this behavior some models won't but the important thing is that you actually have the chemistry that is you know consistent with the model that you're running um and this is what ukca is designed to do similarly you want the interactions with the aerosols the aerosols are incredibly important in in terms of climate um in terms of the tutorials you'll be working through this week um We've recently developed a box model that allows you to run the UKCA code at a single point. Um, and what you do is you specify your initial chemical conditions with an aerosol conditions with input files, as well as some atmospheric conditions. Um, you pass in the photolysis rate. Um, the underlying UKCA routines are the same. So they're exactly the same routines that are run within the unified model as you would be running inside this box model. Um, but you can run it in the single box. It's very quick to run. Um, and so actually the first few tutorials are just using this box model to to, to do things like add new species and, and chemistry before you actually need to, to start running them in the in the uh, global model. And this has been done because what UKCA is, is doing at the moment is um, undergoing a process where we, we want to couple to lots of different models. So while we have the UM and the UKCA box model, we can run within and we have these UKCA code that's been separated out. Um, it's currently being coupled in with the Elfric model, which is the next generation um, abstract model the Met Office is developing. Um, it's also being coupled into the name um, uh, model, which is going to be used for air quality forecasts, because that's also what UKCA, excuse me, does um, is is provide air quality forecasts. Um, and Elfric will actually give us a single column model, so we can they'll be be able to run kind of UKCA in a single column rather than just in a box. Um, we're also thinking about how we might put UKCA into a chemistry transport model like um, Tomcat um, and similarly say put it in a trajectory following model um, where you can kind of run the code along a track and see see what happens. There's also you know potential to put it back into a 2D model um, for, for say stratospheric work so there's lots going on with the way the the UKCA is organized and there's there'll be possibilities to kind of in the future run UKCA in a number of different model environments um, that would be most appropriate to the problem at hand you know you there's no you know you, what you may not want to run a model as complex as the UM if you're merely interested in what's going on at a single point for instance um, or you could run a, a less complex model like a chemistry transport model if all you're interested in is is looking at the chemistry in particular or the aerosols in particular and you don't necessarily need those climate interactions and the feedbacks that are provided by putting it into a into a model like the um so there's lots of interesting and exciting stuff you can do with ukca and there's more coming uh along the uh, along the road um to separate ukca out of the um 
I'm not sure how many people here have used the unified model before or um, have uh, run UKCA before, uh, but previously UKCA was part of the unified model repository. And you'll learn more about these repositories during the week. You'll be making lots of use of them while you're you're doing the tutorials. Um, what we had to do was make this new UKCA repository on Mozers. You'll all have had your Mozers accounts created uh, and you should have checked that you can you can log in and, and, and access the code through those. Um, what this means um, on some levels, it makes it a little bit more complicated because you've now got to make two branches if you want to make changes to the code, one in UKCA and potentially one in, in the unified model. Um, it has other, but it does have advantages. It allows us to keep things a bit more contained. It allows us to have an open source license for the UKCA code, which means the code can be shared. Um, it's better when it comes to publications and things like that, that the code is, is available. Um, we've also been able to organize the code a little bit more. So rather than it being just in one directory, it's kind of organized a bit by by um, by what the code is is for. So this is kind of where this code is found. You'll be working, you'll see that as you're working through the tutorials and you'll be you'll be working with it. And all of this is is part of a um, the Met Office code development process. Now it may be that you don't actually have much of an interaction with this code development process. Um, depending on what your work is, it may be that you you have to interface with it quite quite a lot. Um, and you'll be, as part of these tutorials, you'll be learning a little bit about that. You'll be making a, a, a ticket and checking out a branch from the trunk and developing and implementing your code changes. Um, and as part of this work, you'll be testing your code changes. What we're not going to be covering is, is the review process to commit the code back to the trunk. That's can be quite involved and if you want to learn more about that i'm really happy to talk to you about it um and it's an important process it's a way of getting you know you might do some amazing science as part of your work but if it doesn't go back into the trunk then you know the possibility is, is it's never used again after you've you finished your work which would be a shame if you know the amount of effort you've put in um but it can be quite an involved process to go through to actually get that code committed um so about three releases a year. Um, in the past, there may have been four, um, and they kind of come roughly every four months. In fact, we're kind of literally just in the process of getting a new release at the moment. So um, the code you'll be working with during these tutorials is um, equivalent to kind of the unified model version 13. Um, in fact, we they haven't really decided what the, the next release number is going to be. It might be 13.5 or it might be 14, but um, there's about three releases a year. And what would happen is you'd kind of, once the code's been committed, you then would make, so the next change, you'd make it from the next, the latest version of the trunk to always try and keep up to date because you can't commit things to the trunk that are, haven't been made at the, 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 the kind of current version. Um, it's also important to, to remember that this kind of code process actually runs in parallel with another somewhat slower process, which is to look at science improvements. So um, you, in your work, you might be using, say, UK ESM, uh, which is the, the UK Earth System model. And that's actually gone through a long development process. You know, the code, not just developing the code and committing the code, but also validating that the code changes work, you know, assessing them, evaluating them, um, comparing to observations, comparing to previous model configurations and, and working out if the improvement is beneficial. So it might make, a, you know, a 5%, the answer is 5% better, but if it makes the model, uh, you know, 150% slower, that's not something that could be could be considered because the model needs to run efficiently. Um, but similarly, you know, it might be that it, it has a, an improvement to the code and, uh, and the results, and then it would go into the science configuration. So um, you may have seen if you're thinking of UKSM, there's a 1.1 as well as a 1.0. There were some improvements that went in. And at the moment, there's work going on to develop UKSM uh, version 2, which will be used in the next round of climate change assessments. So there's lots of work going on to also make these science changes available within the model as well as these code changes. Um, so th in terms of this course itself, this training has been designed to teach kind of new users of UKCA um, you know, what you can do with it and how it can be used within, say, the UK Earth System model. Um, <clears throat> but it's also covering, I think, about more general points um, that you might do in any particular, in any context, adding traces, doing uh, emissions, looking at UM output, um, comparing UM output to observations, for instance. Um, 
And they also the, on the website, there are lots of videos from previous training events that have been held. Um, and there's also a walkthrough provided for these tutorials. If you want to sit in for six hours and, and listen to me talk through how, how to do them. Um, some parts are going to be easier than others. Um, don't worry if you have problems, you know, um, make use of the Slack channel to ask questions, you know, ask questions during the Zoom sessions. Um, and, you know, some people might find some bits easier than you. Other people might find bits harder than you. It's absolutely fine. Work through it at your own pace. Um, this is tricky. You know, there's lots of files. I'm not sure how many people have Fortran experience or have experience using Python or running the UM at all. So it could be quite a steep learning curve. And, you know, that's absolutely fine. We'll work through it during the during the week and um, get you up to speed. Um, so what what can you do with UKCA? So, you know, it's, it was originally designed for these long integrations for, for centennial timescales. As I said, it's also used for air quality forecasts at the moment. And there's a number of different chemistry schemes that exist. Um, and I mean, they've been provided because developers thought they were useful and wanted to use them for something. So, you know, there's a, there's a stratospheric chemistry scheme. It's not actually used much anymore, but, you know, that was put in because it was being used by people in Cambridge for the um, ozone assessments, for instance. Um, the, the kind of scheme that's using the Earth system model, that's, a kind of amalgamation of that stratospheric scheme and a tropospheric scheme from the Met Office because the Met Office wanted to make sure we had these, you know, tropospheric processes included. Um, we wanted the stratospheric processes included. We've got this chemistry scheme combined for the Earth system model. Um, there's actually a, a, a newer scheme that's been developed in Cambridge with much more comprehensive tropospheric chemistry, but it makes the model slower. So while the answers might be uh, more interesting from a chemical perspective, you know, if it makes the model twice as uh, run, you know, run twice as long, that's not something that is really suitable for production simulations that, that need to be done for 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 CMIT, for instance. Um, and the point of these tutorials is, you know, if you, there's something missing in one of these schemes or the processes that you want to model in 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 the UKCA, you you can edit it. You know, you've got full access to the code. You can make changes. Um, and these tutorials are kind of to get you a bit more comfortable on how to do that, teach you how to do some some kind of standard things that you might think you need to do um, for, uh, for for making these changes. Um, so the, the thinking is, you know, what's the most common things that a PhD student or research associate would they need to know when they start using UKCA? So you might get to think, have to think about questions like, you know, what happens if I add a reaction in to form a new species, you know? This might be somebody's done some um, some measurements. They think oh, this species is really important. Um, let's put in this reaction to see, you know, how important it might be. And does it? How does it compare to these observations we've got? Um, you know, other experiments might be around changing emissions and looking at sensitivities. Um, maybe you're interested in deposition. You know, you might be changing deposition for for species and, and seeing how that affects the the climate. Um, you know, thinking about the aerosols, you know, how do these, you know, the chemistry and aerosols are coupled together? Um, you know, what might happen to the aerosol properties if you change, um, if you change some of the, some of the chemistry, you might be interested in budgets. You might want to look at the chemical fluxes, the reactions, diagnose the product production and loss of various species. Um, and once you've completed these tutorials, um, you should have a basic understanding how to make the changes to answer these questions. Um, and the way the tutorials uh, are structured is around this reaction here. So we are introducing two new species, um, A and B, Alice and Bob. They're going to react uh, with the hydroxyl radical, and they're going to form the secondary organic compound, which is going to go on to, uh, to form aerosol. Um, and, you know, it, it looks uh, relatively straightforward, but actually there's a lot underneath this. So... We're going to have to add these new chemical species. We're going to have to make new traces for them to be in because they're going to be moved around and vectored around in the atmosphere. We're going to need to have, you know, have some concentrations of Alice in some way. So we're going to have an emissions field. Um, that's going to be um, a, a higher resolution uh, than the model actually is. We're going to need to regrid that resolution, re get it to the model resolution. And then we'll be able to see, you know, how Alice and Bob Look, when th this happens, um, we can see the, the the flux of the reaction. This is a, a surface plot here after three model hours. Um, but also there's deposition. You know, Alice will dry deposit. Bob is going to wet deposit. Um, 
and then we can see how this affects the AOD at the end. And so actually there's a real, there's quite a lot involved. It teaches you all about different aspects of the model because it's basically touching every single part. Um, and as I say, it sounds straightforward, but it's actually quite a big job because it has lots of UKCA code changes with these new species emissions and reactions and deposition um, parameterizations. Um, it's going to teach you about how to use rows. So rows is the, the graphical user interface for how you configure the, the, the UKCA box model and the unified model. Um, so it will teach you just how to pick up and run one of these models or both of these models. Um, it will teach you how to edit the, the diagnostic files for the unified model and the metadata changes you need to make for that. Um, it will teach you how to make new diagnostics uh, and output them. So this is in UM speak, this is called stash. Um, and it will teach you how to how to do that. It will get you used to working with different types of UM files. So you'll be regridding the data to create these new NetCDF files used for emissions. But you'll also be looking at unified model output um, and box model output in Python and getting familiar with that. So there's a whole lot associated with this particular um, this particular task. Um, and when working with UKCA, it's important to break the task down into manageable chunks. As I say, it's quite complicated. Um, this is why we split it across multiple tutorials. And in fact, within the tutorials, it might be broken down again into smaller sections. Um, you know, there might be quite a lot of files that are touched, especially in things like emissions. Um, and it it's, you know, it's it can be tricky. You know, you 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 might get errors when you run the model the first time. And that's absolutely fine. This is how we learn. Hopefully the error messages are informative um, and it will allow you to then kind of understand what you might see. So when you do it again in your work, you'll be familiar. Oh yeah, I remember that error that came up when I did the tutorials and you can, you can work, you know, you learn how to work through it. Um, remember it's both a standalone model and it sits within the UM framework. So um, in this particular way tutorials are done, you know, we don't actually start working with the unified model until um, about halfway through the tutorials. Um, a lot of the work we can do just in the box model, and that might be beneficial for what you're thinking of doing with it as well. The box model is a lot faster to run. Um, you don't have to run this big model just to make some small changes. You can test them in the box model before you need to implement them in the in the global model. Um, there's broadly kind of six themes within these. We've got the UKSA box model and rows and how that works. Um, you know, that will also include just some plotting of output and getting used to the adding new species and chemical reactions, um, which then get, get done in in, uh, in three and four. Um, we move on then to the using the UM in rows, and this covers basics of copying the, the suite before outputting things through stash. Um, then you kind of go into implementing the chemistry and diagnostics and deposition within the, the UM itself. Um, then we look at aerosols. It's only in one tutorial, but actually there's quite a lot of tasks within that tutorial that cover how you say calculate aerosol optical depth and other quantities in more detail. And then the last tutorial is thinking about um, UM UKC output with Python. So um, there's a range of different files that you've been given to work with. There's some observational data. There's some some kind of PP data, which has just come out from the model directly. And also NetCDF data like you might see from uh, running in CMIP or something like that. So you, there's um, multiple different data formats that you might be, be looking at. And this tutorial makes both of Iris and CF Python. So these are two different Python libraries that can be used with um, unified model data. And it gives you um, uh, some experience at, at using both. Um, the way things are broken down, um, hopefully you've seen this page already, um, but we have, you know, hopefully you've read through the things to know before you start. You know, this gives useful information on um, various different aspects of uh, of the tutorial. So about counts, some standard kind of useful FCM commands, what the suites are that would be used. Um, framing of the problem. So I've kind of discussed it already, but that will kind of just have it in a, in a written down so you can go back to it and just have a think uh, through the week. Um, this page here, hopefully you've you've taken a look at that and how to connect to your computer that you've been provided the details for. Um, the additional resources will have recordings and handouts from previous training events. Um, 
the schedule for this week is on is on here so you'll see kind of where we are and, and what's going on um, and then the details of how to connect to python um, are in this other page here so this um, it's a little bit complicated how to connect to use the, the Jupyter notebooks um, so hopefully everybody's been able to, to test that as well as connecting to the to their computer so that's that's something you need to be able to do during the week and then we've got the tutorials broken down themselves um, kind of check, listing what they are what the topic is um, there's been an estimate for what the difficulty is these are kind of rough guesses from my perspective as how long it might take it might be much quicker than that it might be slower depending on things it's absolutely fine how you how you work through it um, they can be quite complicated um, um, generally speaking once you get through the emissions tutorial it's a bit more straightforward these are the ones at the start um, you you kind of work through relatively well but then the new traces in the um and adding emissions that's often the 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 one which has the the most difficulty um there is a walkthrough on youtube as i say it's it's about six hours long but these links should point you to that particular tutorial so you may want to look at those um when you start working or if you have a problem um this is me walking through it live so i do make mistakes through it um I don't know if I handled the mistakes as well as I should have done, but hopefully it's clear when you're doing it, uh, when you're looking at it, what's what's happening. Um, and obviously this week, if you have any issues and any questions, do do let me know as soon as you as soon as you have an issue. Um, so after doing these tutorials, you know, hopefully you'll be more confident using rows um, to edit um, UKCA suites and UM suites. You'll be able to copy suites and run them and be able to understand what the output is. You'll be more familiar with Stash, which is the diagnostic system in, in the unified model and working with UM output. You'll be able to add new tracers, be able to create emissions, regrid them, add those emissions into the, into the model. Be able to define and edit new chemical reactions. Be able to define new dry and de wet deposition for chemical species. Be output new chemical diagnostics. So through, you know, so the, diagnostics of the, the reactions you've added or the de deposition processes you've added and be able to plot and process UKCA data. So quite a lot, hopefully, should be you should be more familiar with by the end of this week. Um, the, what's, the way it works is um, you've been given access to your own computer to run these tutorials on. So um, you'll need to connect to it in some way, um, either using a graphical way called X2Go, which the screenshot shows here, or you might connect it through a terminal, or if you're on a Windows computer, um, you might use something called MobileX to, to connect. So all of these ways will allow you to, to connect to it. Um, X2Go allows you to have a kind of graphical connection if that's allowed on your computers that you have. But it's absolutely fine if you, you just want to go in through a, a Linux terminal or MobileX term. It will still work in exactly the same way. Um, and you'll, you know, this, this image here shows um, a kind of rows in the background where you might select various options and then this image in the foreground here is what silk looks like which is the the scheduler that runs the the, the work is the workflow engine for the model that shows you what's running at a particular time um, this shows gray ones will show you when it's completed and green shows you it's running if it goes red then it's failed and you'll need to examine how to look at uh you'll, you'll have to examine the the output files to, to see what's going on. The way you can do that within Silk is you can right click on um, that option and say, you know, um, uh, view the, the log output and see what it says. And hopefully the error messages are informative. And again, that should be kind of worked through within the tutorials themselves. Um, a little note about resolution that's used in these tutorials. Um, you might be if you've if you've run UKSM or, or the UM before, you might have run um, uh, a high res or a higher resolution model, which is called N ninety six. This has one hundred ninety two by one hundred forty four by eighty five grid points, and it ha goes up to eighty five kilometers uh, over eighty five levels. And so, the ozone field might look like this. You know, this is what a kind of surface plot might might look like. Um, the way the tutorials work in in uh, for the for, for this week. We're running at a lower resolution, so we're only running we're running what's called an M48 resolution, which has half the number of points in both X and Y, and it has only 38 levels that go up to around 40 kilometers. So um, 
the ozone field looks a bit like this the the kind of the surface plots look like this so it's coarser resolution we haven't got a lot of the stratosphere and we haven't got a mesosphere um but this is absolutely fine when it comes to these to these tasks we're not doing a scientific assessment of the output during this week what we're interested in in this week is the technical uh details of getting this reaction working and running in the model um what you uh and this is perfectly fine for this this runs on a a little system it means you can quickly play and test you know in, in previous years uh, we have run these tutorials on uh, archer 2 which is the national supercomputer and actually we had a lot of problems associated with that because we're running on this big system um we might have you know 10 20 people trying to run at the same time if the archer goes down nobody can do anything and actually what we're doing at the moment is we're running on um, aws it's relatively stable you should all be able to connect to it and um be able to run kind of in your own little system so you'll you know you can work through at your own pace without clashes with anyone else without any issues with um compilers and things it was also a bit quicker to compile and run on that on that system as well um i mentioned python so there's been a range of jupyter notebooks have been prepared for you um these include kind of plotting output from the model, regridding the emissions files, you know, processing the aerosol diagnostics and working with observational and model data. So this is, uh, you'll see this right at the end. This is from tutorial 13. You can see kind of plot comparing observations with various different model output. Um, you'll need to have it set up so you can connect to these notebooks in your, in your own web browser. That's the best way to do it, um, excuse me, to be able to, uh, to, to use them. And what they do is they make use of both CF Python and Iris. Um, so exactly the same uh, in both uh, both uh, libraries. They provide the same functionality. They do things slightly differently. This is example of plotting. So this plot on the left is uh, CF Python. This plot on the right is Iris. It's plotting exactly the same thing. Um, but you can see there are differences slightly in how the, the map plots are set up and uh, the way the, the bars are done, the naming, you know, all these other things. Um, and, uh, you know, you might find, you might prefer CF Python, you might prefer Iris, um, you might have to use Iris depending on where you are or what other scripts you're given. Um, generally speaking, CF Python is faster when it comes to reading files. Iris might be faster when it comes to processing data in some ways, but you might need more lines of Python to do that processing. Say if Python tries to do things in fewer lines as possible, but that might, they might not be as efficient as Iris. So, you know, it's, it's interesting to compare the two. You know, I, I wrote these scripts, both of them, and I, it was an interesting exercise for me, who's mainly used Iris in the past to kind of learn more CF Python and see how to do things in, in both ways. Um, so I think they've both got their strengths and weaknesses, and I'm happy to talk through uh, that with you during the week as well. Um, a few tips and tricks for managing your code. It can be quite complicated because you're going to have lots of things going on during this week. Um, all of the things that you, you're going to be, be using here. So you're going to be making branches of UKCA, you'll be making branches of the UM, and you'll be making Rose Suites. Um, and if you want me to explain more about these things you know they're described in the tutorials but do let me know if you want a, a kind of more of a chat around what these terms mean um they're all held under something called version control so they the way that works is you can you can kind of make snapshots of your branch or your suite um and it will give you a fixed number that you can use to reference it and it's done using a tool called fcm which has been developed by the the met office um uh, as a wrapper around a versioning tool called subversion and there are useful SEM commands in the things to know before you start page on the on the main tutorial page. So have a look through those if you've not used FCM before. Um, and as I say, you'll have several code branches and row suites. They're all under version control. So what you can do is you can use what's, what's called the FCM commit command. And what this does is um, allows you to kind of take this snapshot and save it back to the Met Office Science Repository service. So if the worst comes to the worst, you know, say you accidentally deleted everything, you can always get that back. You can you can check out your branch again and it, it will still be exactly where it was when you committed it. What you would lose is any changes beyond the last commit, which is why frequent committing is encouraged. Um, while you're actually working in the suites, um, it's best to use what's called a working copy. So what that would do is you'd have kind of just the directory 
with the code in and you just point to that directory the path to that within your within your suite um and that's and that's kind of best when you're developing a change because it's the kind of fastest uh throughput it can just pick the code up directly um without you having to do any um commits and things uh and especially if you're running on on archer or monsoon uh, you might have to wait for the, the mirror to sync up your changes but um when you're going to do production runs when you when you when you've done all your code changes um in your work not necessarily for these tutorials but when you're you know you, you might have spent ages working on on your code changes you're going to do some 50 year runs 100 year runs whatever you're going to do um it's better at that point to stop using working copies and point to the the code on the repository within the suite and fix the revision number of that of that code commit your suite make a note of all those numbers um because you you might spend you know weeks running these uh these simulations you then might be say well it's great i've got these fantastic results you write it up as a paper you submit it and then you know you get the third reviewer comes back and says oh you know i don't like this bit here can you do redo some runs or show me this or you ask for something you've not output you need to rerun it if you've not committed your changes if you know if you ha you, you might not know what the state of the code was so you've done some more work to that code after you've run those runs if you hadn't committed it you you won't be able to rerun those uh, original jobs again so it's really important to commit everything make a note of it so that if you have to do production runs you can go back to what you need you know go back and see what you did and in, in fact you can document this on the um the ticket that you you do for your branch and i can talk it through with you if you, again if you want uh, how the met office did their simulations for cmip6 so they had a whole uh, process where they would kind of document the the suites used um and i say if you've not used version control rosium before don't worry we can discuss this further throughout the week uh, in the, in the zoom sessions um so now when you finished you'll finish this training you'll be experts in ukca how can you get started using it so if you're a phd student or a NERC funded postdoc at uk university you should be able to get access to the puma service and archer 2 to run it on the national supercomputer um and uh you might if you're um if you have a collaboration with the met office or doing UKCA development work specifically be able to get access to the Monsoon 2 system, which is provided by the Met Office. If you're working at the Met Office, then you'll have access to their internal systems and it will be it'll be all be fine. Um, if you're running on Archer 2 or on Monsoon 2, you might need access to a Jasmine Group workspace where you can archive and process model data. That will be essential for running on Archer 2. Um, there is a UKCA group workspace, but it's very full, so it can't really be used to, to store new things. Again, you should be able to get um, request a group workspace for your for your work for your project um, what you could also do if you just want to develop code uh, test code you can make use of the Met Office virtual machine um, this is actually what we're using for this training um, it's on github you can download it and you can run it on your own um, on your own servers and um, it's it, it's quite a good system to use if you're just doing code development you can't do science on there really but what you can do is develop code before you put it on a big computer like arch 2 or monsoon 2. um in terms of configurations um generally in ukca we recommend for science production runs something like ukasm 1.0 or 1.1 this is really well tested and documented it's got a large number of simulations that you can analyze and use as baselines um it's kind of documented on the cms website as how to get hold of suites um we can also run this model in what's called a nudged or specified dynamics configuration so um, rather than um just having the model wind fields calculated internally what you can do is relax them to say era five um uh output from the eastern wf and this will give you a better representation of past conditions so this particularly if you want to compare to observations or you know satellites or flights or surface data you know running this nudge version is really useful um, from that perspective um if you wanted to say commit code to the trunk there is a development suite that ukca provides this is released every um release so there's always a version at the latest uh um release and so it's good for developing code and there's a short testing suite again that's also at the, always at the latest release um, you can use to test code changes. This is just a two-day short run. It runs on Monsoon 2, and um, it runs it through different chemistry schemes, does some robustness checks, tests different compiler options. So it kind of 
puts the code through the mill a little bit just to check and see if it's if it's coded in, in, in the right way. Um, if you want to run the UKSA box model, you need to use the virtual machine for that. Um, although um, it might be possible, the new version of Monsoon that's coming this year might be easier to get a, a separate suite set up. Um, and see the support section of the UKSA website for these AMIP per uh, short testing and box model suites. Um, in terms of future training, um, I mean, obviously you're all on this NCAS uh, UKCA course, um, but NCAS actually does lots of other courses as well. We have uh, of courses on fundamentals, atmospheric science, uh, or in Python, how to use Jasmine. There are courses on making measurements and working with data and radars and things like that, practical aerosol science. And there's lots of uh, courses on modeling. So as well as this course, there's also the unified model. There's the MPAS course. Uh, and there's a, a, a summer climate modeling summer school that, that happens every other year. So there's lots of courses. And if you want to learn more about NCAS courses, we can talk about that as well. Um, or you can visit the UKCA web, uh, the NCAS website, sorry, and um, see what courses are available and, and sign up for our newsletter. So take a look at that when you when you have a moment. You may already have done some of these courses already or be signed up for, for courses in the future. Um, in terms of acknowledgements, um, There'll be a few demonstrators who are going to be helping out during this course. And so many thanks to them for, for putting in um, the time to do that. Um, thanks to the Software Sustainability for supporting the course and also AWS for help with uh, setting up the infrastructure that you'll be using during the week.